All right, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. I know it's very, oh, thank you. It's very easy to stay home when the pastor's not here. And to me, it's a real testament to the church and the support that you give whoever is up here replacing Brother Joe. And, and I know he appreciates it, and I definitely do. So, again, I just want to thank everybody for coming out here. There's, there's dozens of things we could be doing tonight. Anybody got anything at home that needs to be done? You know. So, again, thank you for showing up tonight. I appreciate that. Great, I appreciate that. We'll let the last few people come in. And then we'll go ahead and get open up in prayer. Billy Curb, thank you for showing up here tonight. I appreciate that. Would you like to open us in prayer, please? Thank you, sir. Has anybody else noticed the cost of things going up? Okay, I'm so I'm on a good track so far. Okay, um, prices are going up uh, for the last couple of years. Uh, domestic flights are up 47 percent in cost. Anybody like cornflakes? Sure, we got a couple. It's up seven and a half percent this year. Anybody like ground beef? Up 13.0. Percent six zero thirteen point six zero percent this year alone. Milk up eleven point two zero percent. You know, um, I'm sorry. Yeah. Unleaded gasoline at Sam's, cheapest place I know in town, right today is three oh five a gallon premium. If you have to use that, it's three fifty. And for those of us that have a diesel, you get to pay four forty nine. What a deal! Makes you rethink your hobbies. And then, if you have a lot of money, you can go to M&M &M Butchers there in Lampasas, prime rib. You can get for the rock bottom price of $19.99 a pound. At that cost, somebody should be cooking it for me. $19.99, uh, it's, it's ridiculous. If you want to get a 2022 Ford F-250 Lariat diesel, it's going to cost you $85,750. On the other hand, you can get a Chevrolet Spark for $11,000. There is a cost to everything. There is a cost to getting married. You, once you get married, you can't do what you used to do by yourself and anytime you want to do it, right? Well, actually you can, but there's a huge price to do that. So you've got to be careful there. There's a price for everything. Did you know that 44% of all marriages end in divorce? You know what that means? 56% in death. Just think about that for a second. 56% end in death. But there are advantages to paying the cost. We have to eat. Now, maybe you're not eating prime rib. Maybe you're eating hamburger. Maybe you like cornflakes. You'll pay whatever it takes to get your cornflakes. You don't have to buy an F-250. On the other hand, that Chevrolet Spark will not pull that horse trailer or that boat. So, again, you may have to pay the price for that F-250 F to be able to do your hobby. A lot of advantages to being married. Most of us are willing to take and pay that price because there's a lot of advantages to being married. There's a cost to everything that we do. We have to figure out in our own mind, body, and heart, are we willing to pay the price? Anybody willing to pay the diesel price so they can pull a horse trailer, pull a boat? Oh yeah, there's a few of us. You know, you can buy a motorcycle. What's a motorcycle go? Just a mid-range. Yeah. 15,000. Can't pull a boat though, can you? Not a, not a big one. Maybe the inflatable one. But for the, 
But we all have hobbies. Maybe it's, maybe it's shooting at the range. I mean, I haven't, I haven't checked what ammunition costs, but I'm sure it has skyrocketed also. You know, um, you like horses, you like bo golf. I'm sure golf clubs have went up. And the balls, and if you're not very good at golf, I'm sure you have to buy more of those. God also had to pay a price when he sent his son Jesus to die for us on that cross. I mean, anybody in here willing to give up their kid? Not somebody else's kid. Your kid. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Jesus had to pay that price also. He had to be obedient to God, his father, to go to the cross. Jesus paid the price on that cross for what we should be paying for. That's a little sobering to me. Now, I know there's a few people in here that's had the perfect life. They've never done anything wrong, never had a crossword with anybody, never did anything they shouldn't have done. Uh, I don't know where they're at. They're in here somewhere. Some of us, some of us have had a less than perfect life. We've done things in our past that uh, can remain there, that we hope we never meet anybody that we did that stuff, that stuff with. And it can just stay way back there. And it can stay back there because now I know Christ. And so Christ has forgotten all that stupid stuff I did. I should too. I just hope everybody else has also that did it with me. But I should be paying the price that Jesus paid on that cross. And to me, that was a very sobering thought. When I was, when I was going through this and doing my reading my study. I mean, when you think of what he had to go through. And that should have been me. I mean, the, the crucifixion was not exactly the most humane way, and it wasn't designed to be. It was not designed to be a merciful way to kill somebody. I can think of a lot of better ways to go. So if we want to give our life to Jesus, so we don't, because we don't have to pay that price, all we have to do is give our life over to Jesus. I got a heckler tonight. All right, I like that. I haven't had one in a while. If she starts throwing things, I want the right to throw back. But there's a cost to following Jesus. Anybody agree with that? There's a cost to following Jesus. And if we look at Luke 14, 27, it says, And whoever, whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So what does Jesus mean when he says that you should take up your cross daily? You know, to take up your cross is something that has to take place in your thoughts, in your mind, and when, the, when you have those thoughts in your mind that are not pleasing to God, you need to crucify them in your mind and put them to death on that inner cross. You have to, when, that, when that, that voice starts creeping in your head, anybody else have those voices? I got six of them. But they, they start chattering. And as soon as I can recognize it, and I've got to go, Lord, that, is not, that voice is not yours. I don't want to listen to it. I don't want to hear it. I need to get rid of it. And whatever is getting me on that subject, I need to get away from. And sometimes, I mean, it doesn't have to be any particular thing. It can just, things will pop into my head and it's like, whoa, wait a second. Let's not go there. Not that it's bad, but it's just maybe memories that I don't need to relive. Live through them once, I don't need to do it again in my mind. It also means self-denial. Denying the flesh what it desires. We are a sinful person. Humans were, well, we were designed to be perfect, and then Adam and Eve screwed that up, you know. But the flesh desires things. It desires things, and we have to deny the cross when those things come to mind and we want to do it. So you must count the cost of, the, of, the cost of your body, your mind, and your heart because he demands that he be Lord of all three. Well, I can give you, Lord, I can give you my heart. But if he doesn't have your mind and your soul, it's, you're doing no good to him. He's not going to be Lord of your life. You have to give him all three, your mind, your body, and your heart. If we look at Matthew, verse, uh, chapter 22, verses 35 through 38, then one of them, which was a lawyer, go figure, asked him a question tempting him, saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. It doesn't say as much as you want to give to me. It doesn't say, well, if you can give me 99%, I'll be happy. It says all. Anybody have a problem with doing all? I mean, seriously, we all, the church answer is, oh, no, I, I'm in. That's the church answer. But can we honestly say 
that we are all in all the time. Yeah. Nobody can do it all the time. Not, n- nobody. I don't care uh, who you are. Billy Graham couldn't do it all the time. But we want to make, but we have to give him all of it. Thou shalt love thy Lord, uh, the Lord thy God, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And not everyone is going to be willing to pay that price. I mean, let's face it. What does Matthew 7, 14 say? Because straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and few will be that find it. Not everybody is going to make it to heaven. Not everybody in the church house is going to make it to heaven. There is a cost, and some people just will not want to pay the cost. Oh, they'll pay the cost for whatever they want to do. I mean, I don't know what a... I don't know what three lines of cocaine cost nowadays, but they're willing to pay that, but not serve Jesus because, well, you know, that's kind of hard. But they'll do this stuff, or it maybe doesn't even have to be anything bad like drugs or alcohol. I like to fish. One Sunday a month is not going to hurt me, right? One Sunday? Okay. Well, two. I mean, I'm still going to church 50% of the time. Well, what about three? Yeah, man, it's lightning, it's thundering out, it's terrible. I want to be a good Christian go to go to church today. <laughs> well, yeah, we, we laugh at that, but that's what people do. It could be, any, pick your hobby. I'm just going to pick on fishing so I don't make anybody else mad. And besides, Brother Joe picks on fishermen all the time. I'm used to it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't think of the rodeo. But we, <laughs> he always picks on us. Isn't that right, Ronnie? <laughs> we have great discussions back there when he does that, by the way. You go, Joe. <clears throat> Hopefully he doesn't watch this. I may have to try to edit. <laughs> but we have to be careful that we are actually willing to pay the price to follow Jesus. Now, I'm not saying that I can't go fishing. I'm not saying you can't go ride a horse, motorcycle, go shooting, or pick your hot. You can go golf. You can hit that little white ball in a gopher hole if you want. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that in its proper place. That's the key. Because what is 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I like number, verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh... The lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. The world passes away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. You can give in to any lust you want, and anything that you can figure out on doing as far as sinning of being within the world is going to fall into those three things. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's it. That's all there is. No, that's not three ways you can sin. That's three categories. There's a whole lot of big long list in each one of those. The world will pass away in the lust thereof. The lust will get you nothing that's worthwhile. Oh, you'll have fun for a season. I did it for a few years. I had a ball. I mean, let's face it. I personally don't believe that the devil is going to make me do something. Or let me rephrase this. He's not going to tempt me to do something stupid that's not pleasing to the flesh. I just don't think he's... I mean, if it's one of those things that... I swear, if I'd have woke up every Saturday morning with a, with a hangover that some people describe, I'd have gave it up. I never woke up with a hangover. I was, woke up hungry. I woke up thirsty. Give me something to eat, water to drink. I'm back on my feet. Some of these people talk about hangovers where they can't function until noon. It's like, good grief. Why would you do that? I don't get it. I don't get it. You know? Um, but again, but it goes back into the lust of the eyes, lust of the, uh, the flesh, and the pride of life. We cannot do those things because they are of the world, and they will pass away. But if we have God in our heart, we've made Jesus the Lord of our life, we have life everlasting. I can't think of anything on earth that I'd like to do that would be enough to, for me to give up my eternal salvation and life in heaven. I mean, I don't know what life is going to be like in heaven. My guess is you can come up with the most beautiful picture in in the world and you're not even going to come close. Not even come close. 
No tears. No tears in heaven. Exactly. You know, no, no illness, no death. I mean, you know, you're going to, I'm going to be, I'm going to be fit again. I'm going to be slim. What a deal. What a deal. If I get, uh, and if I am uh, cremated, I got a hot spoken body. What a deal. My last chance. Well, let's talk about the body. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9.27, But I keep under my body and bring it unto subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Do we discipline our bodies? We're just going to talk about the mind. We're going to talk about the heart and the the mind here in in a second. But do we discipline our body to be God-like, to be Christ-like, to do those things that God wants us to do? We should. We should. And again, I'm not saying every day, all, every, I'm not saying 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you never make a mistake. Let's face it, that would be a lie. That, would, that, would, that sets up more people for failure when churches say, once you're saved, you're going to be perfect. You will never make a mistake. You'll never sin again. Well, the problem with that is what you're saying is I've got to be perfect. Well, and my theory is if I, if I cannot be perfect, and the Bible even says that, I'm not. Why try? I might as well give in to the flesh. Do what I want to do. Do whatever I want to do. But that's not the case. God knows we're going to stumble and fall. The trick is don't wallow in it. Don't say, well, you know, I really like to sin this direction, so let me just kind of ease over there and, oops, I stumbled and fell. Yeah, don't do that kind of stuff. Life will throw enough curveballs at you that you don't have to figure out how to sin in the direction you want to do because you like to do it you'll screw up enough on your own without that. Okay? We will screw up. Get over it. We will. A lot of preachers don't say that. I'm not a preacher, but I'm going to say that. We will make mistakes. But we need to crucify our body. We need to bring our body with discipline to present it wholly unto God. We need to do that daily. Let's face it. The flesh desires the things of the world. Think of anything in the world that you could have, the flesh will want it. And you've got to deny it. Now, I'm just going to say it. Because when most people talk about lust, they're talking about the opposite sex. Or could be the same sex nowadays, who knows. But they think of sex. It does not have to be sex. There are so many things to lust over. Um, Anybody, okay, anybody into horses? Okay, we've got a few over here, I know. Even if they won't raise their hand, I know they are. I, I was watching, I was on Facebook today, and I'm scrolling, and here comes some horse auction. Well, this ought to be interesting. It was a really nice horse, by the way. 2.3 million bucks. It better be a really good horse for 2.3 million dollars. But a, but a person could say, I've got to have that horse at any cost. I'm going to forget the bills, forget my family. i got to have that horse. You can do the same thing with a boat. Hey, Texas Boat World, they just got in the brand new 2023 Skeeters. Oh, what a deal. I didn't look at the price, but I'm sure it's somewhere close to, I don't know, 85000 bucks. You know, at that cost, it probably should do more than just get you down the lake. You can lust after anything. New set of golf clubs. New ham radio. New truck. Name it. If you put your emphasis on something, you've just lusted after it. So you have to, you know, again, everybody thinks it's one thing, but it is not. Adrenaline. Anybody in here adrenaline junkies? Because I know we have a couple of old race cars. they They have to like adrenaline. They have to. I don't know else why they do it. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't get it. And I get the whole adrenaline thing, you know. I mean, you know, there's nothing like your boat number getting called and you take off and you're just going as fast as you can. Get out of my way because I'm going to pass you and you get to your spot. I'm on the... (laughs) Ain't much difference, you know. And I dare anybody, I don't care if they like to fish or not, Get a top water bite. Anybody know the top water? Your, your plug is on the top of the water. Okay, it's, it's, it's worked on the top, and you get this big whoosh, blow up. If that doesn't get your adrenaline going, just 
kick your feet up and die. I'm, I'm serious. It's the most exciting thing you'll ever see in fishing. I also hate it the most because if you don't wait until you feel the weight of that fish on that lure, and before you set the hook, you will most miss them every single time. And then you have to ask for forgiveness for what you just said and ask God, give me one more chance. I'll get it right this time. But adrenaline junkies, it's okay if you like to... It's okay to do dangerous things carefully. Let's face it, jumping out of a... Well, it is. Dangerous things carefully. Driving through Colleen is dangerous, but we do it every day, carefully. Well, maybe that's the way you do it, as safe as you can, as quickly as you can. But the Bible is full of people that could not control their body. Let's go to the very beginning, talk about Eve. Adam and Eve was told to do not to do what? Eat from one tree. He got this entire forest, but one tree. She looked at the tree and saw the forbidden fruit and saw that it was good. That's the lust of the eyes. She looked, looked like it was good for food. Lust of the flesh. She saw as a tree to be desired. That's the pride of life. And because of her sin and that of Adam, and we won't debate who did what first, they were driven from the garden, and we've got sin now, and even death that followed them is a result of their, uh, their actions. Look at an, Anybody look at a news? I'm talking about an actual newspaper, or you can do it online, I guess. Anybody watch the news on TV? Okay, well, we've got a few of each. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life is everywhere on TV, in a magazine, in a newspaper. It's encouraged. It's marketed. There's a reason why it sells. They market it, they market it to kids. You know, every girl whatever, wants to be Kim Kardashian and every boy wants to be Brad Pitt. I don't get it, but they do. Look in a, look in a golf magazine. Now, I'm not sure what the little girl in the short little skirt is going to do for those golf clubs other than sell it. Now, again, nothing wrong with that. You, you can look at that girl and go, that is a beautiful woman, made in the image of God, just as I am. That is not a sin. That is not a sin. Being tempted to want more than that is not a sin. Temptation is not a sin. If, your mind, if in your mind you start going where you shouldn't be going, that's the sin. The same way. You look in a, I was looking in, I got a new fishing magazine in, surprise. Now, I don't know what she had to do with it. I mean, she was in a bikini selling a jack plate. I'm not sure what she had to do with selling. Anybody know what a jack plate is? It's the, okay, I, thought, I didn't think so. It's, the, it's, it's to offset the motor from the transom. From the back, you have the, you have the boat, you have a transom, and then you have the motor attached to the transom. Transom attached to the boat. It gives you better performance. But there she is going, I don't know what that was, but it drew your eyes to the transom. It was a beautiful transom, by the way. But it's marketed. It is marketed to us. Think about it. It is marketed because it sells. It sells. I, mean, I should be a stand-up comedian. I don't know. All right, so Esau sold his birthright for a morsel of meat. It could have been fajitas. I don't know which. Because why? Because he was hungry. He was hungry. He thought nothing of the moment other than satisfying his bodily need. Because he would, hunger will pass. And I know if anybody's ever been really hungry, and I'm talking about hunger. I'm not talking about, gee, I didn't get breakfast this morning. I'm talking about like, you haven't eaten three days, it's hungry. You're hungry. It will pass. It will pass. I guess I haven't fasted that long then. <laughs> but it, that is true. That is true. I've just never had to fast that quite that long. But he thought nothing of the moment, but spent much of his time seeking forgiveness, but he didn't find it. How many times have we done something in the moment and we didn't think of the cost and we pay for it later? Maybe we're still paying for it. Hebrews 12, 17. Talks about Esau, for he knew that how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he now found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. We have to calculate the cost. 
Now, I'm not saying, well, if I calculate the cost and I want to go out and do such and such, such and such that I shouldn't be doing, there's a huge cost. Your soul. But we have to calculate the cost. I'm not going to go out and buy a brand new F-250 at $85,000 because, well, it's pretty. It's brand new. She won't mind. She won't mind. Remember coming back to that part about you can do what you want even though you're married, but there will be a price. That was the, Yeah, you have an $85,000 truck payment and pay the price at home also most of the time. But we have to calculate it. How many times have we wrote a check that our body couldn't cash? Oh, yeah, lots of times, lots of times. All right, let's look at Samson, strongest man in history. He defeated an entire army with the jawbone of an ass. He didn't have the M60s back then or F-15. He used the jawbone of an ass. Yet Delilah lured him into her arms and destroyed him. Now, I could make a good joke about how women will destroy a good man, but I won't. Because he let her, he let her do it. Takes two to tango. But he was destroyed by lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh destroyed him. Again, how many of us have given in to lust? And again, it can be anything that you want at any cost. Are you willing to pay whatever the cost is for something no matter what? That's lust. Let's look at our present generation. Drugs and alcohol. And that's the, that's the simple things. When I was in high school, I don't remember anybody doing drugs. Not, never heard of it being done in high school. Not my hometown. Not my hometown. Not my school. Never heard of it. I mean, I mean you had the, the bad kids that go out and say, smoke cigarettes at the smoking tree. But that was it. You know. But not, not drugs. Not alcohol. Shoot. Nowadays, they got drug pushers in school. Middle school, not just high school and up. Middle school, probably elementary too, who knows. We have drug pushers in school, people flying them into the country, carrying drugs in their body cavities to be recovered later. They want, it, they want the drugs so bad. They're destroying their country. They're escaping with the use of drugs and alcohol. It's a temporary escape. Anybody have ever? I use that, not drugs, but the alcohol to escape many, many times. You know, well, maybe the bottle, the, the, uh, the answer's at the bottom of the bottle. Not there. It wasn't there. And I checked many a bottle. Just in case the first one just, you know, didn't get it in there. Tried several. Wasn't there. It's a temporary escape. We cannot get what we need with a temporary escape. Okay? Sex and nudity. We live in a sex-saturated culture. You can't watch TV, watch a movie, hardly anymore, unless it is purely a Christian-based movie, without there at least being nudity. Maybe just a little bit, but it's enough. You know, why? Because it sells. It sells. You can't be on social media. Uh, go on the internet, YouTube, Instagram. And remember, you see all these little kids running around with a phone? Unless the parents have put parental controls over that, they can access, access all of that. What little kid doesn't want to do that? Or isn't going to do that? If they're not brought up right, they're going to want to find out. What's, what's all my friends talking about? And they're going to find out. So again, parents, watch what your kids are doing on the Internet. It's a net, I look at the Internet almost like a necessary evil. You have to have it. There's a lot of good things on the Internet. Don't get me wrong. I just bought a new, uh, well, about a month or two ago, uh, a, a Traeger grill. I'm, I'm a YouTubing fanatic when it comes to Traeger grills and how to cook. I've done ribs. I've done pork chops. I've done chicken. I want to do a, you know, a, a brisket. Nothing wrong with that. But I know where to go on YouTube or the Internet and what not to. And if by chance I type in a Google search that takes me where I don't want to go, I get out of there quickly. It's a necessary evil that we have to have. But we're being told by society, just do it. And if it feels good, do it again. And again, get your friends to do it too. Misery loves company. So if we look at Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Now the words of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery fornication, uncleanliness, 
idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedations, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have said, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, most people are going, well, I don't commit adultery. But if you lusted, what did Jesus say? If you lusted after a woman in your heart, and I'm going to assume this goes the same way for a woman, if you've lusted after a man in your heart, you've already committed adultery. Okay, well, I don't have that problem. So let's go down. Um, idolatry. Do you put anything in front of God? There you go. Wrath? Strife? How about envying? You ever wish you had the faith like such and such, fill in the blank? I mean, there are some God-fearing people in this church. I mean, when I need prayers, I know who to go to. They don't have, they don't have to think twice. They're going to, boom, let's pray right now. I wish I had the faith. I'm going to envy their faith. That's their faith, not mine. They're, they're, they've got their walk. I've got my walk. But that's envying. That's a sin. So, you know, it's one of those, I am convinced that most of us probably commit more sins than we realize. Because, well, guys, wife comes to you in the morning and go, Honey, does this outfit make me look slim? And what are you going to say? Well, y'all laugh as you want, but we're going to say, Oh dear, it makes looks great on you. Good God, why don't you just get a gunny sack? It's a white lie. We justify it. What's the key word there in white lie? It's lie. Is that not a sin? But we don't realize it. We don't think about it because, well, I don't want to hurt her feelings. But you can, you can tell somebody, I really don't care for that without hurting her feelings and by being rude about it. There's no reason to be rude. But you can tell the truth in a, in a nice way. But we don't realize it. You know. So again, it's one of those, and I'm not saying that well, gee, we're just a bunch of heathens sinning all the time. We just don't realize it. What I'm saying is what I, or what I do every day. I repent of my sins every single day. And Lord, if I have any sin in my heart that is not repented for, convict me of it so I can repent of it. I would hate to get up to heaven. And he goes, well, you, you know that time you told your wife that that outfit looked stunning? Yes, sir. You lied, didn't you? Well, yeah, but I didn't want to hurt her feelings. Sorry. I just don't know if he's going to have exceptions for being nice to your wife. I just, why, why take the chance? But I ask to be convicted of those sins that I'm not aware of. And again, I'm not saying I'm doing it or anybody else is just, well, gee, I'll just go out there and sin all the time. I'm not saying it because I know when I screw up. Why? Because I'm convicted of it. But the little things, I think I'm convicted of it, but I just don't hear it or don't recognize it but I still need to repent of it. So you might ask, how can you abstain from all these things? i got a very short answer for you. You can't. You read my notes? Okay. Give me a slightly longer answer. Slightly longer. You can with God. How can I abstain from these things? You can with God. On my own, I can't do it. I can with God's help. Very true. i got to stay right. So if you come to know Christ, you must present your body as a living sacrifice to God. Paul said in Romans 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. This is the least that we should be doing. We need to present our body as holy and acceptable unto God. Again, doesn't say we're not going to make a mistake. We're going to make mistakes, but we need to present it as holy as well as we can. God, I think, understands we're going to, he knows we're going to screw up. He's going to take that into consideration. He's going to take, hopefully we're not making the same mistake over and over and over again. That's the problem that, that some people have is that they just make the same mistake over and over, and they never learn their lesson. All right, it's enough about the body. Let's go to the mind. Anybody in here have a weak mind besides me? Okay, just want to make sure. You must bring in every thought to the obedience of Christ. Anybody ever had a, have a thought that afterwards when you were convinced, you go, oh, gosh. Okay, we got one back there. Good, we got two, two, two honest men back here. All right. 
I'll let Brother Joe do the lesson on. Uh, I don't care what, it doesn't matter what your IQ is. I don't care if it's 140 or if your age is higher than your IQ. You are responsible for your mind that God has given you. The, because I'm not going to say it's, it's not easy, but it's not hard either. And I know that's really weird for me to say it's not one of the, because to me, I'm a black and white person. It's right or wrong. It's not that hard when thoughts creep into your mind that you shouldn't have to go, Lord, whew, I, get it out of here. Devil, get behind me. Lord, replace it with something. I don't care if it's a song. I don't care if it's a verse. And one of the, easy, one of the ways I do it is I have a few select songs. And in my mind, they all sound like Elvis, because most of them are. That gets me back on track. Say what you want. The man could sing. It can be a verse. Maybe it's through John 3.16. So God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. Whatever it takes, get your mind back on God. Because we all will have those thoughts. You ever have a bad day at work? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My guy disappeared for an hour, and I wanted to get the heck out of there because I had a doctor's appointment. I don't know where he went. I think he was sleeping. But I don't know. He's up in New Hampshire. You know, um, I had some uh, less than godly thoughts in the moment. Because where the heck is he at? I leave early on Wednesday. I mean, he knows that. Plus, I had the doctor's appointment, and I couldn't get a hold of him. Couldn't get a hold of him on Skype. Work phone, cell phone, not sure where he was. So I had to apologize. I had to repent for the thoughts I had against this guy. Again, repented of it. Convicted of it as soon as it happened. You know, um, just had to. We all have those thoughts that we're going to have. Have you ever heard it said, a penny for your thoughts? Anybody hear that one? Your thoughts are worth so much more than a penny. And I know it's just a saying, but give, give a value to your thoughts. Your thoughts are worth so much. Let's look at uh, 2 Timothy. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Does the truth abide in us? Truth being the Holy Spirit? Supposed to. Should be. We need it. It was given to us. But again, we have to have that mindset to keep it holy so we can maintain that relationship. Because God's not going to leave us. We leave God. We should be reading and studying the Word of God in our spare time. And I, hey, there's days that I just I don't read my Bible every day. I'll be the first to admit it. I'm sure I know everybody else in here is probably putting in eight, nine hours of reading the Bible. I get that. I don't know why Brother Joe lets me up here. Probably shouldn't. But we should be studying the Word of God in our spare time. Anybody not have spare time? Come on, somebody. Okay. How much TV did you watch last night? Too much. Too much. Okay. But you don't understand. You, I, don't, I don't have time to read the Bible. Hey, did you see the NCIS uh, special last night? It was, a, it was brand new. Oh, if you watch TV for an hour, but you can't read the Bible for five minutes. You know, um, I know in, during VBS, it was said to those kids, the little kids, you know, they were all, because they were all given a Bible. And I just thought this was the coolest thing. Give God five minutes a day reading you. Now, these are little kids. These are little kids. I don't expect them to read for hours on end. I mean, I can't read it for hours on end. But give, can you give God five minutes? Think what just five minutes, if that's, if that's all we could squeeze it, because our schedule is so tight that we could give God five minutes, because I can guarantee you there's days we don't, we don't read the book for five minutes. Anybody in that category besides me? All right, we got a few. All right, appreciate it. I like to feel like I'm in good uh, company here. We all have spare time that we can read the Bible. And I'm not saying, oh, oh five minutes is the, uh, is the time frame. Didn't say that. I didn't say that. I am not about a time frame, and I've said this many times before. There are days that I will read one or two verses, and it hits me upside the head like a, like a brick. And I'll spend the rest of the day on those two verses just thinking about it and praying about it. That's all I read of the Bible is two verses. There may be other days where I read a chapter or two and go, there's a lot of really good stuff in there to think about. I am not about the, the, the quantity of the time in my prayers, or in the, uh, in the Word of God. I'm about the quality. You can pray all day long, 
But if it isn't with the right heart, you're not doing any good. You wasted your day. I'd rather pray for 5, 10, 15 minutes. God will let you know when to get up or just wherever you're at to stop praying. But he'd rather have quality time than amount of time. And idle mind or boredom is the devil's workshop. I can remember as a kid, my grandparents lived two-tenths of a mile down the road, and I'd tell my mom, and I made this big mistake, I'm bored. Well, why don't you go down and see your grandfather? Oh, that's a good idea. She was on the phone calling him, going, he's bored, put him to work. And when I was a little kid, that normally meant mucking out the stalls, or working in the garden, or doing something. On the other hand, after a while, it's like, I didn't even have to say I was bored, I'm just going to go down there and see if he needs some help. It wasn't a punishment to me. It was not a punishment to go see my grandfather to work with him. But if we are bored, and I, this has happened to me on the lake, you'll be fishing, and we haven't caught a fish in two hours. Be fishing down the bank, all of a sudden, squirrel! Because my mind's not on fishing. Now what happens, what happens when I go, squirrel? Oh, I, I got a bite, yeah, you've been there too. But that's how we are with God. I'm walking with God, and all of a sudden, oh, there's a distraction. You know, and we just take that fear. We've got to keep our eye on the prize. We've got to keep our mind upon Christ. We cannot let the devil creep in. For most of us, I believe that the devil knows the button to push. He's got, about, he's got at least two that will do it every single time for me. And when those thoughts come into my mind, I have to, I have to immediately tell him to get behind me, Satan. You have no place in my mind today that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life, because if I don't, and I dwell on either one of those two subjects, I will go from zero to 60 red in about two seconds. Guaranteed. He knows the buttons to push. So I have to guard my mind against him coming in there on my mind, because he knows what button to push. Most of us probably have that button. Paul said in Romans 12 too, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There's a reason why we're talking about the renewing of, of your mind. Now, when you are saved, when you ask Jesus into your heart, you know, you've been walking down the wrong path, you ask him to come into your heart, you're going to do 180 degrees, you're going to walk away from that sinful thing that you were doing, that sinful life, that sinful road that you were on. I also believe, and I do this also daily, is that I ask for a daily, because that big, that big turn that you do away from sin hopefully won't happen more than once or twice in your life. And I only say twice because we're all going to stumble. You know, you get saved on Sunday. Everything's going to be, life is going to be great. And Monday morning it smacks you upside the head and brings you back to reality that just because you have Jesus with you now that uh, bad things won't happen to you. And so you start doubting. So you fall back into what you're doing. Then you come back and make that big thing again. But I also on a daily basis ask God to renew my mind today. To renew it. Any thought that I might have had. I repent of it. Renew my mind and keep my mind on Him. Again, I, I find little tricks that help. For me, it's music. You know, I, know, I can remember one time Brother Joe was saying, you know, you know, if you listen to the right music, Christian music, or and I'm not saying you can't listen to country. I still listen to a lot of country, and I'll never get rid of George Jones or Merle Haggard. But, you, but, they've, but they've got a lot of good songs. It's not your drink and cheating songs. But he was talking about how, you know, what goes in your mind affects your thoughts. So... I thought I'd put this to the test. So for a month, all I listened to pretty much was gospel. Now that's my kind of gospel. It's probably nothing that was recorded probably after about 1980. It worked. As I filled my head with more gospel music, the less those thoughts crept into my mind that shouldn't be creeping there. So anytime that I find myself struggling, I've got playlists. If you look at my phone, you look at my playlist, you'll see one called gospel. That's my go-to. And I probably play it probably 70% of the time because it gets my mind back in the right frame of mind and gets it off of the things that it should not be on. Let's take a look at Philippians. Philippians 4.8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure and whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on those things that are pure, that are lovely. 
of good report and virtue. Don't think of the things that we shouldn't be thinking of. So here's the question. What are you all thinking about right now? Wish this guy would hurry up and shut up. Wish he would get over. Or, you know, he can go on for two more hours because i got about another 27 pages left. Okay, no, just kidding. How many people have been here? This, this, and I have to, you know, I, I have to guard myself a lot as I think about it now because let's face it. Sunday morning songs, some of them, are not exactly my favorite. They're just not. I actually haven't kept that a secret, I don't think, from anybody. Have I, Todd? What's my favorite song? Shake. 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 Good grief. <laughs> Might as well do rap in here. It doesn't speak to me. It doesn't speak to me. But it might speak to some of the younger people in here. That's fine. But I have two choices when that, when that song comes on. And you haven't done that in a long time. Not that I'm saying you should put it back on the playlist. But I've got two, I've got two choices I can do. I can think of other things. Well, you know, when I get home, I need to do this. I need to do that and whatever. Monday morning, I need to be ready for this. Or, or since I don't like the song and I can't sing it because I don't, I don't care for it, what's the other thing I could be doing? I could be praying to him, praying to God. So I've got a choice. Because let's face it, not, he could play Elvis every Sunday and I'd be in heaven. Somebody in here probably have very bad taste and wouldn't like Elvis. I don't get it, but you probably wouldn't. So maybe in that instance, you need to do some praying. Praying that he changes the station, I don't know. But again, we have to guard our minds. Because it's easy to say, I just don't like this song, and I'm just going to stand there. Well, when I get home, i got to try to make lunch. I need to do some laundry. I need to go out to the boat and, well, I don't know, do something. There you go. You know, it's kind of like, I don't know, what, three months ago, something like that? I started going back into Sunday school. Now, I like talking about fishing. I'll talk fishing with anybody. You know, but I'd come to church on a Sunday morning. I'd do the flyers and all, that, all the duties that I needed to do. And then me and Ronnie would sit and talk for, for about an hour about fishing. And then I got, it kind of dawned on me that, not that God doesn't like fishermen, because let's face it, he had several in his apostles. But that probably, I could be thinking about other things here at church. So let me go. I've heard good things about Craig's class. I wonder if they're telling the truth. I'm not that I'm saying that people are lying. Well, let's face it. What one person thinks is good isn't the other person's cup of tea. It's just going to be a fact. You know, so I went down there. Mind if I join? You know, then I had this crazy conviction a few weeks later because we're getting ready to do this uh, experience in God study. And you're, I looked at it, I was talking about, you know, 10 to 12 people in a class, and you're going to have, what, like 32? Without giving it a lot of thought, because of the Spirit that convicted me, so I kind of went along with it. You know, if you want to split the, uh, split the class up, I'll take the other class. And I've got a lot of blessings out of that class. I've learned a lot in that class, you know. Um, but again, my mind had to get off of fishing, which in and of itself isn't bad but maybe the inappropriate time to do that and get it back where it should be, you know. So now most of my time when I'm in the Bible studying is studying for that dang lesson for the next week or the week after or the week after that because some people like to read ahead so they know answers that you don't, so you got to stay up with them. <laughs> Evil thoughts are the suicide of the soul. How many people have thoughts of worthlessness, self-esteem issues, whatever you want to call it. Well, we all probably do at certain times. But if we dwell on that, if our mind stays there, all kind of bad things are going to happen, and the devil is going to do what? Go ahead, do it. Do it. Do it. Because if you do it, you know, and... Kill yourself, as, a, as one ex, maybe extreme case would be. He's got your soul forever. So we need a new mind that is set on Jesus and not the world. See, God doesn't ask you to change your heart. Only he can change your heart. God asks you to change your mind 
and ask God to help in the renewing of your mind, and I do it daily because I know every day I wasn't 100% right. So, Lord, forgive me of those thoughts I shouldn't have had. Renew my mind to get it back on you, and let's go forward. You know, there was a time many years ago I had two things on the brain. I cannot live for Christ and have just and have those two things on the brain anymore. We have to renew the mind. I mean, I had two desires in life. That was it. Two. None of them was Christ-like. And it wasn't until I came back to Christ that I could break that habit in my mind. So let's look at the heart. Well, actually, we're going to stop there. I'm going to ask Brother Joe if I can finish this next Wednesday. That way he, maybe he can sit in here and he can give me some critique also. Um, because I've only got through two of the three. And we haven't got to the advantage. What's, there's a cost of following Jesus. There's a cost of not following Jesus. Would we agree with that? What's that cost? Hell. Hell. We don't talk about it in the church anymore. I'll, uh, but I'm going, to, I'm going to talk to him because I really, I think we're all, we've all in here got a good foundation. But there could be somebody on YouTube out there on the Internet because there's good things on the Internet that could be watching this and they need to have their mind, their body, and their heart checked. Because we can think we're doing the right things. But maybe I've given something to somebody tonight, whether here or later on YouTube, that gets them to thinking, maybe I can do better. Because let's face it, anybody here not be able to do better? We can all do better. So I would really like to finish this. Uh, there's no way I can get through all of it, let alone through the heart piece. But there's, a, there's advantages to following Jesus. There's a cost to it. There's an advantage to it. Um, the, the advantages are, are huge, but there's a cost benefit to everything that we do. There's a cost of following Jesus, but there's a benefit. And I, and I really want to spend the, the appropriate time on there, and I don't think anybody wants to spend another hour in here, um, especially Mary Jo, my wife, down there with the kids. Um, remember about the, you can do what you want to do. There's a price when you get home, that, that, that'd be a price. Um, and I, I don't want to pay that price. She loves those kids, though. Don't get me wrong. She loves those kids. Um, and I will be helping her out then after, after next week, uh, if Joe lets, Brother Joe lets me do next Wednesday also, and I think he will. Um, but those kids, are, they get a great foundation. There's a bunch of good kids in this church. If you've never had the opportunity, you don't have to take over that class. Ask Mary Joe if you can sit in. Just sit in and watch these kids. You'll be surprised what those kids know. Uh, I don't know. A couple months ago, I, had, I, I, had, I was doing one of the classes. She was out of town, or she wasn't here maybe. She wasn't here anyway, so I had that class. So it's like, anybody want to open a prayer? I ask, I ask that same question in my Sunday school class, and what do I hear? Silence. Silence. <laughs> not, not, I'm not banging on anybody that's in here that's in my class, but I ask that same question to the kids. And I think I had like four kids, so I can handle four kids. And this one young man said, I'll, I'll do prayers. And I'm thinking, oh, cool. You know, it'll be a great kid prayer. I'm listening to him praying. And okay, I'll admit my thought wasn't on praying because my thought is if I'm going to close prayers, I better step up my game because I had a kid kind of prayer in mind that they would understand. The kid gave a great prayer period for any age. Some of it they get down here in, 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 on Wednesday nights, some of it on Sunday mornings, but it starts at home and you can tell. Is the kid perfect? No, he's a kid. He's a boy at that. But he gave a great prayer. It really was. I mean, I was highly impressed. Because he's, what, nine? Nine years old, and he can do a prayer really, really well. That was, that was really impressive to me. But, again, he's got to have Jesus in his heart to be able to do that prayer. So, again. Um, but if you have a chance, you know, not every Wednesday, but you want to see what it's like down there, go ahead and go down there. I'm sure she'll, she'll enjoy the company. Okay? Keep in mind, they're doing lessons for maybe 20 minutes. I tried to do it for, like, 35 minutes, and at the end I could really tell they were done. 15 minutes of, of a kind of a message is great. Then we play games and stuff like that. But anyway, take a look at it. It's great down there. Any questions, any comments, concerns on what I've went over so far tonight? Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. King James. Oh, the last one? 
Oh, it, I think in the, in the program that we use, it's the 21st century James, uh, King James, but it's the King James. I don't know. It's just it's the download that we can do on, on the program. That's why it says the 21st. Yeah. Well, thank you. All right. Okay. Any other comments, questions, concerns? All right. Uh, let's do prayer requests. So we know we have Brother Joe and Sharon. And uh, we'll just put the wedding because 